But I'll tell you what, when I'm done, my biceps are humongous. Humongous. Like that bang. My name is Anthony Bevilacqua, and I'm the host of New York Muscle Radio Podcast. My arms have been a weak point for years. When I started training, my arms measured 11 inches. Even after many years of hardcore training, nothing would get them to grow. With the help of my co-host, Big E, we set out on a mission to gain one solid inch to my arms in 12 weeks. In the greatest experiment of all. 12 weeks later, this program finally helped me get 18 inch arms. The 12 week arm experiment, the ultimate arm growth program, ebook, the audio book, and the workout video. Pick up your copy now on NewYorkMuscleRadio.com. New York's very own muscle building coaches, Anthony Bevilacqua and Pete Kacharian, proudly present to you New York Muscle Radio. What's up, guys? New York Muscle Radio, episode number 118. It's your host, Anthony Bavalacqua, alongside the big guy, Big Pete Kacharian, and welcome to the New York Muscle Radio podcast, the only podcast on iTunes that actually gives away good, usable information. If you're a new listener, welcome to New York Muscle Radio, and we're here now, live. Today, we're giving away our new signature program. I feel like we've been, that's what we've been doing, man, is coming up with programs, but we're giving away our Get Jacked in 12 program, and it's our proven system that will help you get jacked in 12 weeks. Big guy, I'm super excited for this giveaway. Yep, this is a free program we're giving away now. So, uh, you know, I think for anybody listening to this who wants to learn a little bit more about the type of training that we always talk about, this is a great way for them to kind of get their feet wet in it. And it's not something we just threw together in the last minute. This is over a year in the making. You know, we we started putting this together well over a year ago, and there's a lot more background on where this came from, but it's not just a simple uh, program that somebody writes down in a notebook and says, here, follow this. You know, this is something that we've used with a lot of clients. Uh, We've used it ourselves, and I used a very, very similar routine on my own for a very long period of time. So this is something that we're both excited to give to the New York Muscle Radio listeners. Yeah, I mean, it's the least we could do. You know, we have a lot of loyal listeners. Our rankings lately on iTunes have been skyrocketing, and that's thanks to everybody sharing this podcast, subscribing, leaving five-star reviews. I mean, that's what helps the podcast grow because that allows us to get our message out there and get more listeners. And again, like I said on the last podcast and probably the podcast before that, there's a lot of shit out there. And, you know, it's very important to get the good quality information out there. So thank you guys for that. And as a thank you, we're giving back to our loyal listeners. Yeah, I love it. And if you're a new listener, you you happen to pick the right episode yeah. to click on. Yes, and uh, you know, I, I really like, you know, recently we've been getting a lot of people contacting us, uh, telling us and showing us their transformations they've been making recently, and that's just based off of listening to the podcast without an actual plan or program in place. So they're taking what we're saying and applying it. So I think that now that we'll be providing with a, a really good training system on paper that you guys can follow to a T, uh, I think we're going to see a lot, a lot more transformations from that. So really excited to to get that out there. Yeah. Well, anyway, what's what's uh, new with you? What's new in the life, man? Uh, Just living the dream every day? That's that's what I'm doing, man. I uh, I had a really good night's sleep last night for a change. I've been uh, having some sleep issues lately because I, I've been telling you my, uh, my next purchase is going to be a new mattress and a new set of pillows because I don't know if it's uh, – I, I think I've just – uh, slept on the same mattress for so long now that I've basically sunk the whole thing in and it's just not great for the spine anymore man so I actually I, I slept on my back last night I'm uh we we, t- we spoke about this on one of the other episodes I I sleep in that fetal position and um you know tighten tightens up the hips uh when I sink into that mattress that spine just doesn't lay correctly and last night I only slept about seven hours but I felt like I got 10 so that was good and like I said my next purchase is going to be a really good mattress. So anybody listening out there, I'm actually, uh, I'm doing, <laughs> if you're getting I, rid of your mattress, yeah, send I'm, it over to me. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really, I'm really bringing this subject up because I, I want to put this out there for anybody who has uh, any issues with their back or their neck and they got a new mattress or a new bed. Let me know what's the best mattress or bed out there that you suggest I pick up. I'm not rich, so don't don't tell me about something that's gonna you know. Oh, break, man, you're an online coach. Break what are you the talking bank. About? You're rich. <laughs> so you know something that'll fit in a normal person's budget. Let's put it that way. 
Yeah, man. It's it, you know your mattress is so important, but I think it's I think it's also depending on the person. You know, some people respond better to a, a harder yeah. surface. Some people like a softer surface. I think it boils down to personal preference. But your just mattress is is fucked. I told you my story with my old mattress that it became like a hot dog bed. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I think that's what mine is turning into now. But for a while, like I said, it was my back that was bothering me. Now it's my neck. I bought new pillows and they were good for like about a week. And these things just sunk in. I don't know. I must just be a very heavy, heavy sleeper. I'm sinking everything in. Yeah, it's so weird, man. With my hot dog bed, it was like, it, but my I would wake up in the morning every day. My back would kill me on that yeah. mattress. I couldn't wait to get rid of that damn thing. And then I got a king size bed. Oh, man. For those of you that sleep on a king size bed, you know what exactly what I'm talking about. When you sleep with someone, I mean, literally sleep with someone, not, you know, not intercourse. I guess in both in both senses of the word, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm saying like when, you, when you're sleeping at night yeah. with, and you have someone next to you who's also sleeping, um, you don't even know they're there. It's like I don't – my wife is not existent in, when I sleep, which is wonderful. When we had a queen size bed, oh, my God, on top of me, it was just – you know, yeah, you want to be comfortable when you sleep. And when you have a king size bed, man, I'm telling you, it was like you have your own private mattress. And there's actually one, I think it's called the California King, which is bigger than yes, a regular. Yes, I heard king. about that, yeah. Well, that I'm getting excited, like I said, that's my next <laughs> that's my next purchase. I think I'm going to spend my birthday money on a mattress. <laughs> yeah, it can be expensive depending on what you buy. Yeah, I mean, uh like I said, the the mattress I have now is pro- I probably have had it for oh wow, like seven seven or eight years so it's definitely time for an upgrade so i'm not worried about spending uh money on something that's going to last me but i got to make sure that it's going to be good for the back that's that's the biggest thing i don't even care if it appears to be comfortable or uncomfortable if i wake up in the morning and my back and my neck are not stiff i'm i'm happy what if like a jail bed was the right answer if that was the right answer i would do it i i told you i i started sleeping on the floor for a while and it was working out well but then my neck just started hurting again because of the pillow situation so i figured all right i'll just go back in the bed i'm getting i think you're a little bed. sensitive man i don't know i'm, t- I'm telling you like if i wake Every up time in the i morning, talk to you like my wrist hurts my back and it's my it, it bed I'm and gonna, it's always I'm gonna, like a drastic injury too <laughs> this is what makes me laugh it's like because you're like you know most people say like, oh you know my hamstrings are tight pete's like no, man, my IT <laughs> bands, they're going to snap. <laughs> it's always like some dramatic answer. Well, I tell you how I, how I feel. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm real like that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. <laughs> I'm real. No, but you just over exaggerate. My, my IT bands are so tight. They're just going to snap. That's, I love that, when you're like, that's a sensation I, I get. That. Yeah. You, you make me crack up when you're like, yeah, man, I was deadlifting and I, I just, I couldn't do it. And I felt like my back was going to just break. <laughs> it's always like a, a very hard, instead of adjective or a verb. Yeah, well, that that's what goes on. An adjective or a verb? I, I, you, you think I, I you think I know? I have no idea. But did that that that's what whatever, goes, that would, whatever the English term is that yeah. he uses for the words is it a verb? Is it a verb? I think it's a verb. I just describe exactly what's going on in my mind, so you yeah. get you get a glimpse into what goes on in my head. <laughs> you know, every, everybody has their own self talk when they lift a heavy weight or something. They think, oh, this is light. I'm gonna pick this up. Oh shit, this is kind of heavy. I don't know. Me, it's like it's kind of heavy. I, could, I think I could pick it up, but you know, my IT man's gonna snap in half. Yeah, <laughs> that's what goes on in my head. No, but it's the truth, though. That's what's even more funny. Yeah. You know, yeah. I tell people that all the time because I know so many people who are like, ah, I'm not going to get this. So don't even bother. Do not even bother. If you're putting that in your mind before you even go and lift it, it's not going to happen. It's yeah. not going to be magic and just shoot up. I agree 100%. And, you know, if you if you if you can get your mind right before you you, you start the lift, uh, whether it is if it's a heavy weight, if it's lightweight, whatever it is, if you get your mind right first, that set's always going to be that much better. So never go into a set or a lift if your mind's not right. Yeah. We also have to um, – the arm program, man, we, we talked about it in the whole last episode, but we didn't mention the commercial that you made, man. I was blown away. Well, I really I'm, was. I was I'm like, glad wow, you, look. you were happy with the turnout. It was um, – it was kind of funny how that came about because I was speaking speaking with you about it and you know I said all right I have to make a commercial for it and the way I work with any project that I start is I either have you know 150% motivation to get something done or I have zero or zero, <laughs> or zero. there's no in between you know and we we had kind of a deadline to put some stuff out and you contacted me and said you know are you ready to put this stuff out and I said listen it's gonna have to wait because I'm in the zone right now and I have to finish this thing and I'm not happy with it yet but and then I sent you a text message right after it's gonna be awesome so uh, I thought so I'm, I'm glad you know you turned around and you were happy with it too because uh, sometimes you think your work is good and then somebody will, you know, you can't make everybody happy. But if I get your approval and I like it too, then I'm pretty sure most people will like it. 
Yeah, I really liked it. You know, it's funny. When I heard the beginning, I'm like, who the hell's that guy? I couldn't like put two and two together with who that was. So I bet you there's some listeners who can't either. So let them know who is that guy. Well, how about if they first person to contact us and uh, they they um, they guess it right, we'll give them a shout out on the next episode. Yeah, and don't say my name. Obviously, I'm talking in it, but there's someone before me who talks. Yeah, there's actually a couple people in there, but I'm talking about in the very beginning. The very, the the very beginning. There's like a three second, four second skit right before it. But yeah, the other one's He Man, right? There's He Man, and uh, there's there's another there's another reference in there from one of your favorite uh, favorite movies, I guess. Maybe you didn't even catch that. I didn't even catch it. The experiment one. Who's yeah. that? You don't know what that's from? No. That's from the original. That's from the original Captain America cartoon. Oh, get out of here! The, I didn't the, know that. One of the greatest experiments of all. Yeah. How did you? All right. So, how the hell did you figure out how to put all that together? Like, where did you get the idea? And I'm just curious. Mm-hmm. And I, we, I don't know if we should even be doing this on the podcast, but whatever. But it's fine. I'm curious. How did how did you come up with those those two things? Like, all right, He Man was cool, but like, how did you even mm-hmm. think of that? Well, to be honest with you, my method to any type of creative project I do is just let all the ideas just flow and then let me just write them all down and then just piece it together one at a time. So I might sit and just brainstorm really quick. Okay, what's some cool music? What's some cool words? What's some cool quotes? And anything that pops into my head, I just write it down and then I start with one and I say, okay, how can I piece it together like a puzzle? That's the way I do it and my mind tends to just run. You know, some people have quiet. Well, your mind runs anyway. Yeah, some your mind's pe- always running. Some people have very quiet minds. Some people have minds that are all over the place. I'm definitely the one where the mind is just all over the place. So I guess from a creative standpoint, that's good because different ideas just kind of pop out. And when they pop out, I, I say, okay, let me just write it down or remember it somehow. And I'll go back to it later. So I might, for whatever reason, have He-Man in my head. And I say, you yeah, know I don't know where that came one from. One way I'll incorporate it. And I didn't I, even know you watched the original Captain America cartoons. I've never actually watched the original. So Captain how did you America find that cartoon. about that, that experiment? Like, how did that? Where did you get that clip from? I know the concept of of Captain America, the cartoon, Obviously, and but everything where did you like think that. of that clip from? Is my point, my question. Well, you know the, the you know the the arm experiment is a great training experiment, and Captain America was a great experiment. So I said there has to be some type of quote that I could pull from Captain America to make it, you know, sound. Uh, you know, just just fit the the commercial really well, and you know, I I, I that's that's from the first episode, the intro, kind of like the background of uh, the Captain America uh, comic book. Oh, cool! So, I didn't know that. Yeah, so they're describing the experiment. So I thought, I, it fit you know, the I knew it sounded so familiar. I'm like, I, why do I know that? But I'm like, I don't know where that's from. Then I'm like, I thought it was like an Arnold reference. I thought it was like in Junior or whatever for a minute. I'm like, maybe that was from no, Junior. No, but you know what? That's a that's a great idea. I'm sure there would have been something in Junior I probably could have pulled. Although would it have? It probably would have been more entertaining and you know, uh, you know, funny rather than fitting the like the motivational thing that would come from something like Captain America. We have to record a video on that. We should do a video, like make an actual commercial, because that video, that sound came awesome. Yeah, like I like I told you, I I accidentally turned the commercial into like a trailer for a TV series or a movie, <laughs> but with no video. So if we we come up with a video concept for it, I think it'll be pretty cool. Yep. We also mentioned in the last podcast also that we bundled together the cracking the flexible dieting code and the arm experiment in one package, and we had a lot of people actually turn around and and purchase that. So again, if you're interested in getting cracking the flexible dieting code or the arm experiment together, go on NewYorkMuscleRadio.com, click on that products tab. And pick up your bundle today. Yep. And, you know, we're going to be putting out this uh, free training course for you, too. So you're going to have that available to you as well. So if you want if you want all of them, they'll all be available for you. So you'll you'll be able to get bigger, stronger, leaner, eating what you want. You'll be able to get some massive arms. And overall, if you want to learn how to train properly, everything, we're going to have all that available for you guys. Yeah, speaking of eating what you want, man, I just made another pizza. Whew, I'm so full. I just scarfed it down right before this podcast. How did you make it? The same way so, we did last time? Yeah, So, but this one, I, I added some pulled chicken that I had made before that to it. Oh, man, it was so good. Let's see the macros on it. Pulled chicken. I never put that on pizza before, but I can imagine that's pretty good. Oh, it's so good, man. I don't know why my fitness pal is so slow. I've been on a, a mushroom pizza kick lately. Just mushrooms? Just mushrooms? Just mushroom slices. I love mushroom slices. I don't like mushrooms, but on pizza, I love it. Yeah, I'm not a mushroom guy either. Not not with, any, not with anything else, but with pizza. All I'm, right, so in the pizza that I made today, we have 1,300 calories. It's a big boy pizza. 67 grams of protein, 33 grams of fat, and 200 grams of carbs. 
Yeah, that's usually what my pizzas turn out to be, 200 grams of carbs. It's Usually mine have a little more protein than that, but the pulled chicken doesn't have a lot because it's pulled and it's yeah. has other shit in it. But yeah, I was going to add some uh, turkey, like honey turkey to it, and I'm like, eh, the pulled chicken's enough because it was like, it just covered it perfectly, and I'm like, ah, if I add that, it's going to look ugly. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I chose not to add it. Half of the pizza experience is how it looks, how oh, it smells, and, you know how 100%. how it tastes. But yeah, the appearance is a big it's a big thing. You and know, actually, it, what I added on it too was roasted pepper, roasted red peppers. I cut them up and sprinkled them throughout. Oh man, I love roasted red peppers. I do too. I've actually never had them on pizza though. I put them on yeah, everything. So I've just never had them on pizza. But you know, it's funny because when you start making the pizza, you don't think, oh, this is going to be two hundred grams of carbs, unless you already know. But you know, looking at it, you might not think it adds up. You can make them so much lower carb. You, if you take a flatbread or something, it could be like 30 carbs versus 200. But, you know, if you guys are from New York, you, you know you got to have the right size crust on there. You can't go with that thin, cr- thin crust flatbread unless you're, you know, on poverty macros. But that's another story. Well, speaking of poverty macros, there's a big recipe out there for um, what you call it, cauliflower dough. Okay, yeah, cauliflower I've, I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that with a lot of recipes using cauliflower, never- yeah. Yeah, but for the dough, I don't know. I don't I've know never done dough. it, so I can't explain. But I can't see how it stays apart because I don't know. I just don't. Care. I can't see how it stays together. I just can't. I have no. I would idea. see think it would fall apart. Yeah, I, I would. I would think so. But imagine replacing. I mean, for us, it's no. You know, would it wouldn't be good. No f- bueno. I don't, yeah, I don't feel like I'd even enjoy it to the point where it'd be worth it. Yeah, but if you're dieting, I mean, that might be a good option. I guess so. You're eliminating basically 150 carbs. Yeah, but like I said, if you use a flatbread, you could cut it down to like 30 grams of carbs. That's true, too. So, I mean, I'd rather go with the flatbread than cauliflower, but who knows? Maybe it tastes good. That's like if you're going extremely low calorie, though. Yeah, that's like contest prep. You know, when you try to make everything look, you know, it takes you like yeah. four hours to get like, you know, a meal with 20 grams of protein and 20 carbs. I know. It's so funny because like when you're when you're contest dieting and you, you make a meal, it takes you longer to make the meal than it does to eat it, even if it's breakfast. You mm-hmm. know, breakfast yeah. in the morning now, my breakfast takes me literally about 35 seconds. You know, I take honey bunches of oats, I put it in a bowl, add some almond milk, and then just... You know, mix a whey protein shake and just down it. But that's <laughs> that's what I do. If I was contest prepping, that would probably take me about a an hour, and then you know, it would take me two minutes to eat it. Yeah. Yep. Let's move on to the shout outs portion. New York Muscle Radio shout outs. Again, if you guys want a shout out, head on over to Facebook.com slash New York Muscle Radio. You can find us on Instagram also at AB Fitness at Jacked Fitness, and we'll shout you out on the podcast. So um, do you have any on your end before I start? You want to look? Um, you could start, and I'll I'll take a look to see if I have anything on my end. All right, so we got Jay Rushing, Ross McCandles. Who actually I clicked his profile because I I thought it was um McCandles is actually the name of the guy who used to own Extend, I believe was his last name. But uh, I clicked Ross's page. And this guy's peeled, man. I think he's from the UK. He's peeled. So shout out to him. And then I'm shouting out from from Instagram, JD Gaines, who he was taking credit, uh, not taking credit, giving credit for his the deadlifting advice that we've given. Uh, the total resets on the deadlifts, you know, doing one rep at a time, taking time in between to totally reset. So he shouted us out. We gave him the idea. He's been utilizing it and he's loving it. So shout out to JD Gaines. Actually, I think, I could be wrong, but I think JD Gaines is going out with, uh, what's her name that we had on the podcast? Lita. Okay. Yeah. I think that's I a, know that's who you're talking boyfriend. about. Yes. Yeah. He tagged us in a couple of stuff on, uh, on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's her boyfriend. I I hope that's not the one who said that she was getting too muscular. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think that was that was a while ago. This must be the uh, the current boyfriend. Oh well, then I, I, just, say, I say I just made them fall, I just made them fight right now. I I say he's current. gonna listen to be like who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> the guy's on New York Muscle Radio. Talk. Oops. Sorry. Yeah, we blew up his spot. I'm sorry about yeah. that, guys. Sorry, Actually, Peter. I didn't do anything. It was all you. No, I was you, man. That was your <laughs> voice. No one could tell us apart. Remember, so they didn't know who. To. I think if they've listened to us long enough now, they could tell. And a shout out to Joshua uh, Kurelis. He actually put together, this is actually cool, he tagged us on Instagram, but he put together a post of all the podcasts that he listens to. And of course, New York Muscle Radio was right up there at the top. So we're going to shout him out. Thank you for that. And that was actually a cool list. He had like every podcast fitness wise known on that. I I, I actually didn't know a lot of them, to be honest. Yeah, there's there's plenty of them out there that you know don't really get too much recognition, and you know what? Unfortunately, I'm sure some of them are really good too. You know, that's generally the way it goes. Like I said, I don't listen to any more fitness stuff. I'm putting out one. I'm, I'm not listening to anyone. I don't, want, I don't need anyone else's advice. So you still li- just the guy with the full hawk. 
Yeah. So you still listen to podcasts, but you're not really on the fitness kick right now? No, nah, I'm on like the Tony Robbins stuff. The Tony, is there any good Tony Robbins stuff? You want to nah, shout anybody nah, out did, on I, that that's actually good? or that Like good business ones? Yeah, I'll shout any, out. The, anything that you listen to that you think anybody else that, you know. That would like? Yeah. yeah I, I, I mean, even for me, I'm I'm curious to hear. <laughs> I probably won't listen to them, I'll be honest with you. But, you know, if I'm bored and I. Yeah, you definitely listen to it. But I'll shout out, I'll shout out some other podcasts. It's a good idea, man. So I'll shout out, um, well, for money. I always listen to Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey is the man when it comes to money. Recommends no debt. Um, if you follow his system, you'll be able to build wealth. It's pretty easy. So the Dave Ramsey, he's actually number five in I think all podcasts. Period. Oh, okay. But yeah, he so his show has been around for years. Um, and the uh, the funny thing is, I listen to all my podcasts on two times speed. If you listen to his on first time, he's like a redneck. If you listen to it on like normal speed, it's so fucking slow. Hold <laughs> on, I, I have to let you guys listen to it because it's funny. Come on, this fucking thing doesn't load. All right, so this is like one of the episodes. All right, so oh wait, I'll let you listen to it in uh, in normal speed. Hold on, this is normal speed. Oh, that's what. Show in North America. Why? Because you're the subject we talk about. All right, so oh, that's wow. normal. So you see how slow he talks? Yeah. Now, this is how I listen to it. Number is 888 That's 888-825-525. But you finally can get the, the point across. And, and Anthony, list, for anybody who doesn't know, Anthony listens to his podcast on two times speed while he's driving, too. That That's <laughs> that's his way of listening to it. I've been in the car with him listening to podcasts on two times speed. I, I said, this would drive me fucking crazy. I'm driving, there's traffic, there's all these people around me, and I got some guy talking a thousand miles an hour on the po- on the radio at the same time. But nah, don't bother me. I, I know. You can see how our minds work completely different. All right, so then I listened to um, The Self-Made Man by Mike Dillard. He's another famous podcast. Um, that one, he interviews like all different types of um, you know, successful people, so that's a really cool one. I listened to The Cardone Zone. Grant Cardone, he makes a lot of money. Uh, I think he's kind of full of shit, but he, he's kind of motivating, so that's why I like to listen to him. I listened to uh, Freedom Fast Lane with Ryan Daniel Moran. He's uh, another one for Building Wealth. It's a good one. Um, Online marketing made easy with Amy Porterfield. She talks about all online stuff. And I listened to, this one's going to be funny, uh, Parenting Great Kids with Dr. Meg Meeker. Oh, wow, man. So uh, I'm always, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be influenced on everything, you know? You got to, you got to live outside. You can't just, I can't just be all fitness all the time because we talked to this so many times. Yeah. You know, fitness, fitness, fitness. After a while, it's like there's nothing else to you but fitness. And we've talked about this a hundred times, you know, 10 years doing this. Yeah. I feel like, you know. That's all you know. I want to try to branch outside yeah. of fitness a little you know, bit. You know, it's funny. I can't tell you until until more recently how many times I've run into a situation where if I meet somebody new, whether it's a male or a female or anybody, a business acquaintance, a friend, a family member or whatever, where, you know, guys generally have, uh, you know, just bullshit conversation over something. And it's very easy to find out quickly what somebody's into while having like just general conversation. And it always comes back to fitness with me to the point where more recently I'm like, I'm not not even going to engage in fitness conversation outside of the fitness world, you know, with average people, everyday life, because there's, like you said, you know, you gotta, you gotta branch out a little bit and it's very easy for somebody who, you know, if you're, anybody who's into this, the way me and Anthony are, we've been doing it our whole lives. Basically, it's very easy to make that the center of everything. And even just in general conversation it's very easy for it to come back to that, especially if that's what you're surrounded in all day. Anthony's surrounded in it even more than I am. And I even have trouble talking about other stuff. So, you know, it's very, it's definitely something that, that I'm making a priority, like I said, lately. And I'm finding that, you know, like you said, there's more, it's more stuff you got to pay attention to in life rather than just fitness. Plus it does get, it could get boring to a certain degree, you know? Nah, I mean, me and you could talk about fitness all we day. Could, Obviously we, could, we, we could have talk a podcast about that we talk on hours about fitness. I know it's funny. Everybody asks me all the time. How do you guys keep putting out another podcast? If you're on episode hundred something, like what are you going to talk about on the next one? You know, and, Whatever we whatever we feel like talking about, there's always something to talk about. Yeah, well, we did a whole episode on talking about nothing bodybuilding related. I forgot about that one. That was yeah, a fun I, one. Yeah, that was. So go back and listen to that. If you're a new listener, go back into the feed and listen to that one. I think it was called like non body, uh, everything non bodybuilding or something to that effect. Maybe it was. I, the, it was. I think it was the anti the anti bodybuilding yeah, podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that fun. was fun. <laughs> Oh, God. All right, let's move on to the listener question of the day. So, again, if you guys have a question or a case study and you'd like us to answer for you, you could submit it on our website, newyorkmuscleradio.com slash listener question. All right, so today's question is by Shane Hunter. He says, hey, guys, what's up all the way from Australia? Down under. But let's put another shrimp on the barbie. 
<laughs> dumb and dumb. I love, I love that, that movie, man. That movie's great. They've never been able to duplicate that, though. Well, did you see the other one? Oh, it was the terrible. Or whoever Wait, it was. Which one? I didn't even see it. The, the one with them, too. Yeah, that was terrible. Anybody who decided, anybody who hasn't watched that one, thinking it's going to be anything remotely like the first one, I couldn't even make it through the whole movie. That's how bad it was. I'm telling Mary, you. Mary Swanson. <laughs> Swanson. <laughs> Samsonite. <laughs> this is the name of the briefcase company. Did you know that? Yeah. Uh, He's like, her name's on the briefcase. Look it up. Oh, Samson. Samson. <laughs> I was way off. <laughs> I was like, he's like, slippy, slappy. Hey, oh, man. Jim Carrey's hilarious. Yes. There's a couple of, uh, I'm, we'll hold on to this question for a second. There's a couple of celebrities I'd really like to meet Jim Carrey, Will Smith, and The Rock. Those three guys I really would love to meet because I feel like they're great people in person. Yeah. You know? I really want to get into this conversation with you and actually ask you why you picked those three people, but I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent here. Wait, what, why not? I'm just out of all the people. Like, so you said Jim Carrey, Will Smith, and The Rock. Yeah. So well, The I, Rock because The Rock's the uh, man. Yeah, obviously. The I can, kind I can, of, that's I, kind of obvious. Yeah, The Rock is kind of obvious. Jim Carrey, I mean, I've, I've actually, I've, I've listened to some of his interviews and watched some, and he definitely seems like more of an intellectual person than what you get on, yeah. on, on screen, which is, which is great. Will Smith actually too, even, probably even more so. So I, I guess I could, I could understand that, but it's three totally different people. Yeah. I just love all their movies and just like the way that like, they're just geniuses in their space. Yeah. You know, Jim Carrey is one of those guys. I don't know if you know Jim Carrey's story, but started from nothing. Yeah. Like he would get denied on everything. And then just, I think it was Saturday Night Live that he actually, like, that's how his career started. Remember Fire Marshal Bill? Yes. Yes. That was I think that was, like, his man. first thing. It was, yeah. I, I believe it was. Yeah. And Will Smith's just, like, an icon, you know? He's just an icon from Fresh I used to watch Fresh Prince of Bel-Air oh, all the I time. Grew I up, love I that grew show. I grew up watching that show. I've probably seen every single episode. Oh, man. my God, dude. There's one scene that I, if I see, I crack up laughing. Um, the uncle, Uncle Phil, yeah. he's in the living room dancing, right? All of a sudden, Will runs from upstairs, runs downstairs. Earthquake! <laughs> and he runs out of the seat. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah. That had to yeah. be hilarious to watch them film that. I would have loved to have been on set, on set just to yeah, see that. Yeah, yeah. That 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 show. That, I mean, that show was around for years, man. And it was just like it was one of those where you could you could watch it at any time, pick it up, you know, stop watching it, uh, you know, come back to it, and it was just always be entertaining. If it's on TV now, I watch it. Yeah, exactly. I know, me too. And there's one scene like when he, with his dad, when his dad comes back. That's like yeah, the yeah. one scene that always catches me because my dad's not around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I think I, I think yeah. that scene catches everybody. To be honest with you, Will Smith. I, I don't know, man. Those are the three guys I would like to meet. Actually, Shaq was on my list for a while, and I actually met him, so I crossed him off my list. And he's a really nice guy. As much as a nice guy he seems, he is. Interesting. So met, yeah. Yeah. So Shaq was on my list. He's crossed off. But those are the three that I'm. I want to speak. Actually, I could add Steve Weatherford to that mix too because I just love that guy's work ethic. And uh, yeah. So those four guys really. Anyway, back to the question. Yeah. Let's let's keep it keep it fitness related. But I I I like I like uh, I definitely like where you're going with that too. I'm sure some people want to listen to it. Sorry if we cut off your uh, you know. The train of thought that we have going on over here. Well, we, but we, you know, we gotta, just mentioned Australia and we went on a big tangent. Yeah, exactly. I forgot even where we were with this podcast. All right, we have we have a listener question. <laughs> we're, still, <laughs> we're still on. All right, let's go. Hey, guys. What's up all the way from Australia? Love your show. I listen to you dudes in the car on the way to and from work. It's awesome. It feels like I'm hanging out with a bunch of mates. I wonder, if it's, on, I wonder just, if it's on two times speed when he's listening to it in the car. Oh, man. Our New York accents must come across very good on two times speed. I listen to our podcast on two times speed if I listen to it. That, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I would, too, since I know what the actual podcast is going to be about. No, sometimes I catch stuff, man. I guess because I don't pay attention when you speak all the time. Oh, that's <laughs> sometimes awesome, I, yeah. When I re-listen to it, I hear your voice. I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't even realize he said that. I could have made a joke about that, I always yeah, say. Yeah, actually, true, true story, Anthony, sometimes, like, like he's doing right now, he'll sit back in his chair when I'm talking, and he'll just kind of just lean back and wait until it's his turn to, turn to speak again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyways, my question is, does coffee have any effect on muscle building, positive or negative? I've got young kids that don't allow me to sleep anywhere near as much as I'd like, and I find myself drinking a decent amount of coffee throughout the day. Cheers for any advice. Keep praying and spraying. <laughs> Sean Hunter. Hunter. Holy shit. Sean Hunter. Oh, Shane Hunter. Shane Hunter. Boy meets world. Boy meets world. <laughs> Mr. Hunter. <laughs> All right. So he basically wants to know if, the, if does coffee have any effect on muscle building? Yeah. I mean, the, my answer to that uh, – Yes and no, but both indirectly, I would say. You know, as far as um, building muscle, it's not going to directly add more muscle to your frame, but 
like you said, if you're tired and you need more caffeine to help give you more energy, you're going to be able to train hard. If you're always exhausted when you're training, your performance is not going to be great. Caffeine's absolutely going to have a direct impact on your performance. Uh, as far as negatives too, um, caffeine could definitely suppress your appetite, which depending on if you eat enough already or not, it could could hurt or it could uh, help you. If you need to eat more, it might not be the best thing. Uh, if, if you if you're dieting, it's definitely going to help you. Um, also, if you're if you're drinking coffee or caffeine in general late at night, it's definitely going to affect your sleep than going to sleep, which might actually be worse than if you just uh, stayed tired and actually got to bed on time. So, directly and indirectly, I'd say it can help you. Um, there's not going to be any direct effect, at least, you know, significantly from just consuming extra coffee or caffeine. Yeah. So I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. My, my co-host knows about it and it's not the right time to fully say anything yet, but I'm actually coming up. I'm kind of bootstrapping this by myself. I'm actually coming out with my own supplement line. So this is hush, hush guys. So try not to tell anyone. Um, yeah, it's gonna we'll, be- we'll, we'll edit this out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm not even going to say what the product is, but in the near future, I'm going to have something and it has to do with coffee and it's going to be unbelievable. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it at that. I mean, my co-host knows the ins and outs of it. And what are your thoughts on it quick? I, would, I, I would just sum it up by saying game changer. That's def- definitely the way to put it. Yeah. So, all right, man. Yeah. Coffee and muscle building. Um, it's not going to have a negative effect on it. I would say it ha- would have more of a positive effect, like we said, you know, the caffeine to keep you up. But I would try to focus having the caffeine. Try not to have it throughout the whole day like crazy. You want to have it mostly. Try to have it a lot more before your workout because that's just going to give you the energy to fuel through your workout and blow through your workout. If you're having, you know, two cups in the morning, you know, two cups in the afternoon, and then you're going for your workout and you have to have two cups again, that's kind of a lot. Maybe cut it down one and one, and then you know, go from there. You want to because caffeine, you can get. Addicted to caffeine, you can get yeah. tolerant to caffeine. So you don't want to be able to be relying on caffeine to just get up in the morning. Yeah, that, that's such a huge problem for so many people. And I, it's something that so many people don't pay attention to. And I have conversations with people all the time about this. You know, they, they basically get to the point where they build such a high tolerance to caffeine that they need it to function normally. Yeah, my wife's like that. Yeah. She has like six, six to eight cups of coffee a yeah, day. I want to stab her. I'm like, Jen. What are you doing? Yeah. And then, and then the best is she doesn't have it. She goes, oh, I have such a headache. And it's probably because I didn't have coffee. I'm like, hello. That's yes, exactly, it is. Of that's course. exactly why. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people say that too. Oh, wow. I have a headache because I didn't have my coffee. Well, that shouldn't be a reason to keep drinking the coffee just yeah. to fix the headache. That means you got to stop drinking so much coffee. You know? I told her that. I'm like, Jen, you need to cut it back. And this is why I'm coming out with a coffee product. So I think, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Whatever. All right, guys, so be on the lookout for that one. That hopefully, hopefully, I'm hoping, I'm waiting for it to get back. I'm waiting to get my shipment in. As soon as my shipment comes in, I can post it, but I can't say anything until then. And ugh, it's killing me. All right, guys, we're going to take a short commercial break, and we'll be right back with the Get Jacked in 12 program. Become bigger, stronger, and perform harder in 12 weeks. What's up, New York Muscle Radio listeners? It's your co host, Big P. Kacharian, and I'm glad you're all listening. Put down the tilapia and asparagus. Learn how to get bigger, stronger, and leaner eating what you want. Pick up a copy of Cracking the Flexible Diet Co. exclusively at NewYorkMuscleRadio.com. But for now, let's get to the show. Hey guys, it's your host, Anthony Bevilacqua, and I just wanted to announce that my brand new personal training facility is now open. I'm currently taking on new clients in the Long Island, New York area. If you're interested in working with the best personal trainer in the business, head on over to abfitnesstrainer.com and sign up for your free consultation. Then you can understand why bodybuilding.com has named me personal trainer of the month. All right, guys, we're back. New York Muscle Radio, episode number 118. Get jacked in 12 with our proven muscle building system. So we're super excited to give this program away. Again, we're giving this program away as a thank you to your loyal listeners, to our loyal listeners. And, uh, you know, again, thank you for subscribing to the podcast. Thank you for reviewing the podcast. Thank you for sharing the podcast. You know, if it wasn't for all you guys, we wouldn't be here doing what we're doing. Like we said, we've tried to do a YouTube channel before, and that just was a flop. And uh, this is the, we did this and caught on right away, and we're super thankful. So this is our way of giving back. And uh, also, man, we were talking about it before. We went on a little bit of a tangent, but I actually checked my email in between the break, and we actually got an email from someone saying that they actually want another anti-bodybuilding podcast. Oh, wow, man. 
That, I, I Isn't t- that fitting? I yeah. I mean, that's funny. Funny timing, actually. Maybe they maybe they heard us talking about Jim Carrey and Will Smith, and they said, "Keep talking, keep talking." Yeah. <laughs> so, if you guys want us to do that podcast, just let us know what you want us to cover, and we'll cover everything anti bodybuilding. Yeah, whatever you guys want to know. You want to know some personal stuff? Ask us. We'll talk about it. But I don't know. What do you think? Should we keep it a uh, PG rated or? Nah, PG, it's always got to be rated R, man. PG-13. Rated R movies are so much better than PG-13. That people movies. might want to know some really explicit content, but you know we have an E next to every single podcast episode we've ever put out, so I'm sure the anti-bodybuilding one will have to put two E's on there. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. All right, so let's talk about this program, man. So how do we come up with the Get Jacked in 12 program? How someone's going to get bigger, stronger, and perform better in 12 weeks? How do we come up with this? This Tell is them. pretty much, like I said, this goes back at least this over a, a over, brain child. over a year. Yeah, actually, to be honest with you, this is one of this is one of the first things that me and Anthony uh, started working on together as you know as a as a project together. And this was way before we even started with the podcast. And the whole idea behind this was, um, now I was training pretty much with the goal of getting bigger and stronger at the same time. But, uh, you know, I feel like that's always the goal. Yeah. I mean, some people are just strict powerlifters. Some people are just strict bodybuilders. But I think in general, and as far as, you know, the people listening to this podcast, everybody wants to get bigger and stronger. And that was my goal. And I started, you know, training with a little bit of a different system from what I had been doing for a long time, but still took the, the basic principles. And, you know, I went to Anthony and I said, you know, how can we make this a little bit more specific rather than. When I say specific, actually, I mean more general. It was very specific to my goals. How do we make a program that's more general? And we kind of just started brainstorming ideas, and I showed him what I was doing, and he tweaked a few things, and we basically came up with a whole twelve-week cycle that you know it breaks down different different uh, phases into strength, hypertrophy, and performance, and they all build on top of each other. And when we finished this the whole thing, like I said, it's very similar to what I was doing, but more general. Uh, I really wanted to test this out, so I started running it myself, and we started having a bunch of people run it, and we made a little tweaks along the way, and I'm, you know, like I said, this is over a year later now, and we finally have the finished product, and the finished product is a free product for you guys, so uh, that that's how that came about, but it was, like I said, it was all designed based off of just taking somebody from, you know, whether they're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced lifter, and just making them much more proficient at getting bigger, stronger, and performing better. Yeah. All at once, because it's not like, and and when I say all at once, I'm not talking like CrossFit, where they try and get you to be the best at everything all at once, because that doesn't work. (laughs) You can be good at a few different things. The problem with CrossFit is everything is random. That's the problem with CrossFit. So you never get... Better. Yeah. Yes. You can never get. You never given the opportunity to get better. They'll deadlift. They'll do a five by five one day. They'll do you know on deadlifts and then they'll go like and they'll run a mile like the next workout. So there's no progression in that deadlift ever. And the next time they do deadlifts, they may it may be you know whatever, twenty reps. It's just the way it, you know it works on CrossFit, which is there's no progression because you're not able to perform. Right. And you know the thing is, if I you know the whole idea behind CrossFit is you 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 know the. Actually, to be honest, I'm not one to speak on what the idea behind CrossFit is because I still have no idea what the hell the you know the idea behind it is. But you know, the general gist of CrossFit is you're trying to get better at everything. You know, you're not trying to just focus on one thing. But if you were to take that model where you're trying, okay, we want to try and get our clients and our athletes better at everything, such as strength, size, performance, cardiovascular, power, everything, it would look, the program that we would give them would be much closer to something like what we have right here with the Jacked program. Yeah. So who's the program for? Who, who If we could classify the amount yeah. of people that would actually use this. Well, honestly, I would I would say it's, it's pretty much for anybody. But um, more specifically, it's definitely for somebody who's somewhere between the intermediate and advanced stages of training. But you, it can be used as a beginner. When I, The reason I say it can be used as a beginner is to classify somebody as a beginner or an intermediate or advanced is not always just based off of the amount of time they're training. A lot of people do base it off of, okay, this guy's been training for five years, so he's intermediate or advanced. But if he's still training like a beginner for five or six years, I don't classify him as an advanced lifter. Because yeah. if he, if he's still doing like a bro-type split for the last five years, he never took his body through any type of new training system or any, or any optimal training su- uh, system for that matter. So... You could still train them like a, a beginner rather than an intermediate or advanced lifter. Somebody who's already, 
gone through the phases of, you know, increasing volume, frequency, uh, periodization and stuff like that. They might have done that early on in the career where I would say they're already at the advanced stages, depending on, you know, the type of progress they've made. So you don't just go by length of time. So I would say somebody in the intermediate stages, meaning maybe they've tried out uh, more advanced types of training, but haven't really uh, gone through a full process of going from beginner to advanced. And this this whole idea is to get them <clears throat> from that beginner to advanced stages. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you on that. I think that, um, you know, it's gonna, if you're a beginner beginner, you don't even know, in my eyes, you don't even know how to lift properly. Your form's not there. You don't, you know, you're not even sure about certain exercises. So as long as you have a good knowledge base of fitness, you know, you know how to perform the basic movements, this program is for you. That's what I would say. Yeah, and if you're still stuck in that, that mindset of training body parts once a week, overtraining and stuff like that. This program is definitely something I recommend you guys give a try because it'll pretty much bust all those myths and you'll see after 12 weeks how your body responds and your whole your whole mindset on what you should be doing in the gym will change because like when I start first started working out, like we've mentioned so many times, I had such bad information given to me. My mindset when I went in the gym was literally, I'm going to just destroy my muscle groups until they have to recover and grow stronger again. And if you guys take a look at this program, you'll see that there's almost none of that in here. You know, everything is based on progressive overload and correct amount of volume, frequency. And, um, you know, you'll still get the results you're looking for. So you'll see that you, when you, if you go through this phase, uh, when you're done, if you want to run it again, you can. But when you're done, you'll have a new outlook on how you should be training in the gym. And ladies, this program is also for you too. We're talking in general here. This program is actually, I would recommend this program to women before I'd recommend anything else to them because like I've, we've said several times in this podcast, for women, if you guys want a really good body, you have to train and lift as heavy as possible. You have to train like a guy. You have to train harder than guys. That's the only way you're going to get results and this program will work for you guys. We've used it with our clients before, which we'll get into in a minute. I don't want to cover too much of that, but ladies, this is something that you need. Yeah, it's going to help anybody who doesn't focus on strength training. And, and women, generally 9 out of 10 of them don't. And when I say strength training, it doesn't necessarily have to be a strength-specific type of workout, but it definitely needs to incorporate. You know, if, you're, if you're trying to develop your physique to the best of its abilities, you definitely want to incorporate some heavier weights with progression in there. So you're, if you're one of the girls that squats with the, the preset barbells that are only 20 pounds or something like that, you're going to have to venture over to the squat rack grab that 45 pound bar and then just start slapping some weights on and then when you get up to 225 then you're gonna have those nice glutes and uh you're gonna have that nice uh nice toned body that you thought you were gonna get with the the 20 pound barbell and then send the pictures over to Pete Kateria <laughs> well we might use them for the glute program that's eventually gonna come out and when I say the glute program that's gonna come out we don't have anything in the works right now but I know uh, we actually I was you know it's funny you said that I was just thinking that yeah, we should. We got to get to work on that program. Yeah, it's not in the works yet, but the the requests have been coming in since we mentioned it on the podcast, and um, a lot of people are actually they're really looking forward to that one. So I think we're gonna have to uh, put our heads together and start uh, start doing some stuff. I have a few people that want to experiment on some new things, but I have so many ideas that I already want to put in there. I don't want to, I don't want to just start experimenting with other stuff just yet because I have so many things that I already want to do. And I want to see how we could put it together and make it work. Yep. All right, guys, I know you're probably asking, all right, what the fuck is the program already? Get to the fucking point. But we're answering these questions before we even discuss the program because I w these are the basic questions. You know, how we came up with it, obviously, you guys want to know that. Who's the program for? Obviously, you want to know that before. You know, will it work? Obviously, these are all stuff that we have to know. Can women use it before we even get into the gists of this program? So I think, we, like we said, we've been use, utilizing this program for well over a year now. And, uh, We've been experimenting with it with our clients as well. We've gotten great feedback and great results using this program with our clients. I mean, do you have any any specific story in general that you want to tell with that? Or Yeah, well, like I said, um, this program is kind of a variation of the exact training I was doing. So I can speak for myself. Like you said, we did use it with clients. There are a few different variations of this program with clients, and they all had similar results to me. But uh, I'll just speak for myself because it would be very easy to explain my results. And 
Uh, like I said, when I say a variation, the, the basic principles as far as the amount of strength training, the amount of hypertrophy training, and the amount of training focused on performance was all generally the same, but mine was a little more specific to my goals, such as bringing up certain body parts and things like that. So there might be added volume uh, for like my back, my, you know, my hamstrings, my whole posterior chain, more so than the template that we have for you guys. But um, like I said, I used that training system for myself probably for a good two years, you know, slight variations to it along the way, adjusting volume and stuff like that. Um, but when I did this, it took my strength gains as far as in my advanced stages, the furthest in the shortest amount of time. So when I hit a sticking point on both my bench, all three, my bench squat and deadlifts, I started training with this type of system and was able to bring them all up significantly in my advanced stages, which um, you could even, you know, attest to being in the advanced stages and looking back at the amount of weight you were lifting a year ago and even through progressive training over time, maybe even lifting the same weight on certain exercises or only improving five, 10 pounds here and there. So when you're able to implement some type of routine to get those lifts moving again, then you know you're on the right track. So that's what this was able to do for me. And uh, like you said, we had some of our clients use the program that we have for you guys, which is more more general and less specific. And some of them are just pretty much rank beginners to this type of system, but the strength gains they reported were really, really good. And that has always laid the foundation to build more muscle. You know, and more muscle is really going to come down to diet and consistency over time. But if you get those strength gains moving, then you can bet that the muscle is going to follow. Yeah. All right, let's get into the program, man. So let's talk about the Get Jacked in 12, become bigger, stronger, and perform harder in 12 weeks. So basically this program is a 12-week program, and it's broken down into three training blocks. We have a strength block, a hypertrophy block, and a power slash performance block. Each phase pretty much lasts about four weeks, and they're all necessary because they all build up on the next one. So you need again, it's going to take 12 weeks to complete the full training cycle. Right. So you're going to set yourself short if you look at it and you say, okay, my, my goal is just hypertrophy. I just want to get bigger. So you might say, okay, let me just start the hypertrophy phase, but you're not going to get as much hypertrophy out of the program if you just focus on the hypertrophy section, even if you did that for 12 weeks long, because the strength is the prerequisite for the hypertrophy phase. Mm -hmm. And then the, the power and performance builds off of the, uh, the first two phases. So everything builds upon each other in training. There is no training system that's going to just be specific to one goal and not take advantage of the other ones. Even in, in powerlifting, uh, powerlifters' main goal is to lift a bar for one rep, but they don't train with just one rep. You know, you'll never get consistently stronger, or I shouldn't say consistently stronger, but you'll never reach your max potential if you just focus on just one thing. There's always going to be other things. Obviously, some of those other things are going to be less important and less specific, but they're always going to have carryover. So, you know, you can't say that because I'm only benching one rep in a competition that all of my upper body training should just be one rep. You know, you're never going to get the max out of that. So the same thing it, with this system, um, it's going to it's going to help you get stronger. It's going to help you get bigger and it's going to help you build more power and performance. But like I said, those all are going to come to the maximum amount from the other phases all building up to it. So if you just even if your goal is one of those, you're going to get all three. But it's because all three of them work synergistically. Yeah, I mean, you just mentioned it, too, and I'm going to touch on it. We had a client who actually came to us who he was pretty much maxing out every workout, you know, trying to beat a new PR every single one, you know. He was uh, maxing out on deadlifts, maxing out on squats, and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, you can't do that every every time you train. There's no way. You're never going to make any progress. You're going to burn yourself out, and you're just going to get super frustrated. You have to have progression in there, and this program does that really well. Yeah, and you know, the key is the more advanced you get is you have to, like, I, I, I don't know if I came up with this term, but it's the way I describe it, so hopefully you guys understand it, is you have to allow your body to progress. You can't force it to progress once you get to a certain certain uh, level of advanced because the longer you're doing this, the slower the progress is going to come. When you're in the newbie stages, first couple years of lifting, you can force your body to do whatever and it'll pretty much adapt. You know, you, you're not you're not training with this heavy weights. Your body is primed to adapt. It hasn't grown much. Um, so it's very easy. Whatever you're doing, if you're training hard, you're probably going to progress at least to some degree. When you get to the point where you're lifting such heavy weights that even add another five, 10 pounds to the bar, 
is going to be very hard to do. If you try and do that every single time you go to the gym, two things are going to happen. One, it's not going to happen. And two, you're going to vent, you're going to end up burning yourself out and you're going to end up getting injured. So you have to have a system in place that allows that progression to come over time. So the longer you're training, the more advanced you're training, the the greater that period of time is going to have to be. And you have to break up your training over the course of weeks and months rather than just uh, even a week or, or days at a time. Because a lot of newbies have that mindset of one workout at a time. Okay, today is chest day. I'm going to try and progress from last chest day. That's a great mindset to have, but the more intermediate and advanced you get, you have to look at, okay, this month, how am I going to progress versus last month? Then when you get to the point where you're really advanced, it's going to come down to how is this year going to be more progressive than last year? So like I said, this is a good way to kind of get you to that stage. You're going to be looking at a 12-week period rather than a, a one-week or a couple of days or a month, whatever it is. All right, so the first training block, weeks one through four, is going to be our strength training block. So we're going to be focusing on building raw strength. So we're going to be working the main foundational compound lifts. So it doesn't matter if you're beginner or advanced, strength is going to be the foundation for any athlete looking to gain the maximum amount of muscle mass. And this phase is critical for long-term development. Yeah. So we'll, mm-hmm. when someone trains in the strength range, what I, I know the answer to it, but mm-hmm. uh, I'm putting it back to you. What rep range are we having them train in? Yeah, so the strength range is generally anywhere from about four to six reps. Uh, anything below that is more power specific, and then above six, you start going more into the hypertrophy ranges. I mean, you could achieve hypertrophy from all rep ranges, but specifically if your goal is strength, it's going to be somewhere around there. Like five is generally the very even medium number there, so somewhere between four and six pretty much. That's where we have them focusing most of the time in the strength The max phase. OT numbers? Four and, I mean, you know, they Max OT, that, that system has a lot of flaws, but as far as uh, optimal training weights, if you're going to stick to a certain range, I really think they nailed that pretty well with that four to six rep range. It's going to depend on certain exercises like lateral raises and calf raises and stuff like that I don't agree with. Uh, but for general... Well, clearly calf raises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they even had you do abs with that actually too. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, as far as um, sticking, if we're talking about what strength gains as far as the, the basics for building that solid foundation. That's where you're going to want to train most of your compound lifts. Again, uh, you could get hypertrophy out of that, but it's going to build that raw strength so that when you do go to this hypertrophy phase, you're going to be stronger. So whenever you're stronger with training with hypertrophy, training uh, rep ranges, you're going to be able to handle more weight. And obviously more weight is going to be more volume. And the key during hypertrophy phase is volume. So you're basically setting yourself up to be able to do more volume, which is why I said if your goal is just hypertrophy and you jump right into the hypertrophy phase, you're actually going to be doing that with less volume, at least to start, than if you started with the strength phase, got a little stronger, then moved on to the hypertrophy phase. So that strength phase is priming you for everything that's going to come after that. It's going to make each phase more optimal. I mean, for me personally, I like that rep range. I do too. I like yeah. that rep range to train in. I think it's a good rep range. You're challenging yourself. It's not so like, uh, you know, sometimes hypertrophy training can be fluffy. You know, to be honest with you, if I could have it where I wish it was this way, but it's not. If I could have it where I didn't need any type of periodization in my training, I didn't need any type of any adaptations other than just adding weight to the bar, I would just train in that rep range forever. Yeah. Indefinitely, Mm -hmm. four to six. I love the idea of max OT training, and I wish you can train like that into your advanced stages and never have to change anything. Just keep trying to add weight to the bar. Unfortunately, like I said, you know, that's – you're, it, you could use that to milk your newbie gains, but then from there, you'll find out quick that you can't just stick with, with that exclusively, unfortunately. I wish it were true, but it just doesn't work. Yeah. And we also have built-in deloads during this program. So at the last week, we're going to have kind of a deload for you to get you ready for the following cycle with the following block. And the following block is going to be the hypertrophy block. It's going to be that block that we're going to be increasing the reps. So again, during the first four-week training block, you're focusing mostly on building raw strength. So in the weeks five to eight, the focus is shifting from building the maximum amount of, to building the maximum amount of muscle mass. So this phase will involve plenty of heavy lifting, but with more emphasis on building your body. Yeah, so so like I said, I mean, you're going to be using more more higher reps on here. They're not they're not very high, but they're higher than what you'd be doing in the strength phase. And the focus here is obviously on getting in as much volume as possible. So it's a little bit of a different mindset than the strength phase because your goal during the strength phase is okay, progressively add weight to the bar, and that's always going to help you build more muscle. But then during the hyper 
the hypertrophy. I'm I'm about to say hi, hypertrophy now because you keep saying it. But hypertrophy. Be, I like saying it like that. Yeah, but because Hyper, wait, what, what is it? It's say hi, again? hypertrophy. Hypertrophy. I like saying hypertrophy. So you know, however you want to say it, but you know, during that muscle building phase, you know, the hypertrophy phase, you're hypertrophy. you're really gonna want to subject your muscles and your nervous system to more volume. So the key during that phase is to get as much sets, reps, and total weight in there. Not trying to necessarily every week add weight to the bar, but when you can, you definitely want to do it, but not forcing it because if you try and force it, then you're actually going to end up lifting less, getting in less overall volume. You know, if you start missing reps, uh, you can't complete the prescribed reps because the weight is too high. You might actually end up doing less volume. So the mindset's a little bit different during the second phase than it is during the first. Yeah, exactly. And this is like kind of the phase where we focus on maybe your weak points. You know, if we have like right. a more of a sticking point or more of a body part we're trying to bring up, we kind of overload the volume for that body part. And as you'll see in the program, which did we even tell people how to get the program? I mean, I mentioned it again at no, the end. But, yeah, I figured we were going to mention it at the end, but we I don't think we mentioned it yet. So Well, anyway, if you guys want this program, <laughs> we're explaining it fully throughout before we give it to you guys. Head on over to NewYorkMuscleRadio.com, click on that products tab, and scroll through the products, and you'll see it at the end. You can download it right then and there on our page. So you don't even have to send an email or anything. We were not asking for yeah, an email address. I was going to say, this is not one of those gimmicks. Like, oh, download my free ebook here, but put your email in here. We're going to email blast you a thousand times a day till you hit the unsubscribe button. I don't, never understood that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're not doing that. We're not yeah. asking for an email address. All that we ask for is that you five star review the, the podcast, you subscribe. You share it, or you head on over to the products page and pick up one of our fine and dandy products. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so that's how you pick up the program. But yeah, like we said, this phase is going to be more emphasis on building the body. So again, if, we, if you have a weak point, here's where the training is going to increase in that area. And overall, we're just trying to bring everything up and trying to add more mass, hypertrophy. Yeah, pretty much. You know, Like I said, when I was doing it, it was a little more specific to me. This is where I'd be doing more... Uh, back isolation exercises to get extra volume in, hamstring, posterior chain, everything like that. So again, the volume is going to be split pretty evenly because like I said, this is a more, uh, this is a more general routine for everybody. So the goal here is to bring hypertrophy evenly across the whole body. Uh, maybe, hypertrophy. Hypertrophy, you know, if, you, <laughs> if you're just trying to get bigger everywhere. But if you're, if you're trying to bring up one area specifically, like if we were to incorporate the arm training routine into here, the, the volume across the arm workouts would be higher or, or not necessarily higher, but it wouldn't be lower or, or a medium amount. You would have more specific volume going towards the arm training. So, Yep. All right. Then we'll, we take a deload that last week again. And then we shift over to the weeks 9 through 12. So during the first eight weeks of training, we're focusing on building raw strength and muscular development. Weeks 9 through 12 will now, will now complete the full 90-day training cycle. In this final phase, you'll be focusing on max performance, becoming a master at, lifter techni at lifting techniques, and overall better performing athlete will always result in a bigger, stronger bodybuilder. And I say that in quotations because mm -hmm. everybody who works out, who wants to try to improve their body is a bodybuilder. You know, most people, when you say bodybuilder, think of like, you know, Arnold right. and Ronnie Coleman. Yeah, everybody in the gym is a bodybuilder. You know, yeah. if you're if you're in there for any any reason to improve your body, I consider you a bodybuilder. But yeah, so the, you know, the, the third phase, which is, like you said, is the, it's the performance and power phase. It's not, I guess it's not the sexy phase, for, you know, in terms of bodybuilding training, because everybody either wants to get really strong or they want to build muscle specifically. So when I tell them you're doing something based around performance and power, it might not sound that appealing. But, you know, the fact is that's probably one of the, the, the most fun out of all the, all the phases to train in uh, because it's going to be completely outside the box. And it's not going to be something where, like, I, like, you know, we're making the CrossFit jokes where you're going to be on a BOSU ball doing some type of uh, dumbbell, dumbbell throws and catches or some st <laughs> stupid thing that somebody created uh, today. But, um, you know, like I said, you know, from, from what you described, you're going to be learning how to master techniques and you're going to be training with different rep ranges, different volume than you're, you're used to in the strength phase and in the, in the hypertrophy phase. And the goal here is overall to get you better performing in the gym. So if you've ever seen uh, a power lifter come in the gym, he might be really good at a one rep max, but he might get out repped on 225 by an average gym goer. But, you know, the, yeah. the power lifter might be able to max out at 150 pounds heavier than this average guy. His gym performance is not 
it's not great. It's not, it's not, it's not jacked. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's the goal that we're trying to get you here. We want to get you better performing at all these lifts because if you could max out on 405 and then you can rep 225 for 50 reps, you, you have strength all around. But if you're one of these guys that can bench 405 and can bench 225 for 10 or 12 reps, uh, you know, you're not maxing out all of your physical, you know, capabilities. And if you, if you, develop all of those again it, they're all going to play a role in each other so now you have a bodybuilder you know bodybuilder quote unquote who can bench really heavy and can also do a lot of reps on bench uh, his hypertrophy uh, capabilities are going to go up even more because he's going to be able to train with more volume and he's just going to be able to f- perform more work in the gym so Generally, your work capacity and your performance are going to go up during this phase, which will allow you to train heavier, train harder, train longer during the other phases that come around again. Yeah. I mean, speaking of benching 225 for reps, like real athletes, like football players and stuff, that's like a test. Right. A 225 max test is a, see how many reps they could do. And I think, um, I forget who it was. I think Arnold, I think he was quoted at doing like 60 something reps with 225. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, that, that's a very accurate test of, of relative strength. You know, because like I said, you can have somebody who's really strong on one lift, you know, at a max and can't do reps. You know, the, 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 the age-old joke about powerlifters is some of them could squat 600 pounds, but they can't do a bodyweight squat or a single leg squat with no weight. You know? Yeah. So as far as athleticism and, and overall performance, it's, it's terrible. You know, they have one specific strength, which they're really good at. But, you know, if you if you're a bodybuilder and you, you know, you could tell those types of lifters, you could just looking at them, if they're very skilled in one area, but not everything they have, you know, you could tell because they might be very big, but, you know, their muscle mass might not be there. If you see a power lifter who has a ton of muscle on their frame, generally all around their their physical capabilities are very good. So that's what we're trying to get our athletes you know, to be, and that's, that's, that's always been my goal. I I never wanted to be really big. I've always, my goal has always been primarily, um, hypertrophy based and looking as big as possible, but I never wanted to be big and be one of those guys who couldn't lift in the gym. You know, I never want to get out benched by some guy smaller than me. Yeah. Even though it happens all the time to you, huh? (laughs) The truth is, yeah, it does. But I out curl, (laughs) I out curl all the big guys. (laughs) (laughs) Oh God. I okay, guess so, I mean that's pretty much the Jack program. I mean, we're not going to give you the details on how many sets, how many reps because, you know, why do that when you could just head on over to newyorkmuscleradio.com, click on that products tab and then scroll through and you could download the whole program for free. Again, we're giving this away as a thank you to you guys. So, you know, we're not going to go into the sets and reps here. We're just kind of explain each training block and if you have a question, refer back to this podcast and I'm pretty much pretty sure after you see it, we would have answered it. If not, you could send us an email at newyorkmuscleradio@gmail.com. We do all this for you guys. Just keep that in mind. So please, 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 how we want to grow the show, share it, review it, five-star review it, subscribe, you know, and pick up a product at NewYorkMuscleRadio.com. And that's it. Yeah. If if you guys decide to start uh, using this training system, tag us on Instagram, Facebook, or whatever social media you're in, or send us an email directly and let us know how your progress is going because- Yep. Hashtag, hashtag, I'm making it right now. Get- jacked j-k-k-e-d in 12 that's yeah. the hashtag and yeah let us know how it's going because I, I love when people reach out to us that i have no idea even listen to the podcast and i see transformations you know i've never met you before i never spoke to you but you listen to the stuff that we talk about on the podcast and apply it and you you know the results are, are just there so uh i always see what you guys tag us in i might not get back to everybody but i always yeah, you're see a real it, piece so. of shit when it comes to that <laughs> People always so. comment to us or whatever, and if, I, if you see it before me, I'll miss it, and I won't get to see it, and I'll always scroll back and find it. I'm like, this motherfucker saw it and didn't answer. Well, if anybody thinks that I'm doing to that personally, you could ask any of my personal friends if I respond to them immediately, and they all tell me the same thing, that I, that I take too long to, re- <laughs> to respond to them or I forgot to respond to them. So it's nothing personal, guys. I do see it. Uh, I might not get a chance to respond right away, though, but please just set... Yeah. Reach out to us, tag us. I will see it and and I do I'm not just saying it. I do appreciate it when you guys do it because it lets me know that you guys are listening to the stuff that we put out there and you guys are getting the results. So, you know, that's always the goal. Yeah, of course. And I'm the big mouth in the group, so I'll always comment. Anytime someone tags me in something or 
you know, whatever, I'll always comment because I, I just think that's like the highest form of flattery for me because, again, like we said, when we did this podcast, it was just two guys talking to each other and to have an influence on so many people. I mean, we have over, you know, 300,000 downloads of this podcast. It's crazy. That's crazy amount of people who actually listened, took the time out of the day to listen to this and we couldn't appreciate that more. I wonder, I wonder how many of those people never listen to it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but- Two hundred and ninety-nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's probably one person listening right now. <laughs> yeah. So for for the you that's listening, thank you so much. And yep. Yeah, I mean, turn. you know, you know, even if it even if it's only one person that actually downloads the program and then uses it, it's still one more person than if we didn't put it out there. But I, I'm sure it's gonna get way more than one download. <laughs> exactly. So again, guys, NewYorkMuscleRadio.com. Click on the products tab. Download the free Get Jacked in 12 program. The hashtag is Get Jacked, J-A-K-K-E-D, in 12. That's the hashtag. Tag us, send us your reviews, and whatever. We appreciate you guys. Big guy. All right, guys. Pete and Anthony, New York Muscle Radio, and we're out. Enjoyed this episode of New York Muscle Radio? Make sure to hit that subscribe button, leave us a five-star review, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, New York Muscle Radio.